Hey guys, it's Mr. Johns, and I want to talk about uh, the uh, Ravel Ford Bronco plastic model kit that I just finished building and uh, how fun it was. First of all, um, I've built plenty of models in my lifetime. Typically, they are um, either Mustangs or cars and maybe some trucks from the 1950s. Those are kind of my, my favorite era. Um, model model cars give you the chance to own a car that you have always wanted, but you know you'll likely never have. Um, and that's what's so great, you know, for twenty twenty five bucks, you can own a car, build it, paint it, make it your own, and collect it, uh, display it, and it becomes kind of part of your um, you know collection of things you love. So. <clears throat> um, I was looking for something different. You know, another Mustang. There's still some I haven't built, but just a little bit actually tired of Mustangs a little bit. Uh, so I just wanted to try something different. So I saw this at Hobby Lobby, and, um, you know, even though the prices have jumped up to $27, which is crazy, I used to build them for $6.99, you know, under $10 when I was younger. So they've, you know, doubled, if not tripled in price. Um, but the detail uh, is is really good. They've, they've gotten better. And, you know, when you think about it, that's about the price of a ski pass for a day. And I spent, I think, almost, I wouldn't say a week, but three or four days off and on building. So you get a lot of money. You get a lot of enjoyment for the money. So the picture on the left is the actual vehicle and the picture on the right is the model. And so, you know, they're similar. There's a few differences here and there, but um, that's about the, the vehicle that um, I built. A little history about the Ford Bronco. Uh, they've been building Ford Broncos forever. So uh, I was born in 1967. So a year before I was born, they came up with the first, they came out with the first Ford Bronco. And the, the first generation where they all kind of looked the same, um, like this bl dark blue one here on the screen, was uh, for 11 years, 66 to 77. Generation 2, uh, 78 to 79. Generation 3, 1980 to 86. Generation 4, 87 to 1991. And I don't have any pictures of those, but they did change. They became kind of bigger, boxier, and, uh, well, maybe not boxier, because they're always boxy. But uh, they became more of kind of a family-sized um, SUV, sort of. Um, this is pre-SUV, so this was still kind of considered their off-road, uh, you know, vehicle. Not necessarily family vehicle, um, because m most of them were two-door. Maybe all of them were two-door. Um, and um, so they changed. But uh, Generation 5, 1992 to 96, that was the last generation. <clears throat> and, and right about that time was O.J. Simpson and his whole thing where he ran from the police after his wife and um, uh, her uh, acquaintance were murdered in Los Angeles. And he um, escaped in a white Ford Bronco, which became worldly infamous. Um, Ford swears that that's not why they discontinued making them, although they they did have a, a pretty bad name at that point, Ford Bronco. So if you mentioned a Ford Bronco, that's what people thought of. Um, so they, after all those years uh, of building, as a matter of fact, 30 years straight um, of having a model, they discontinued them in 1996. Um, you know, all the buzz going on right now is the new Ford Bronco, as seen here in this picture, this uh, kind of this dark uh, yellow Ford Bronco. There's a lot of buzz about it. They, they look really cool, and people are pretty excited. It's kind of a competitor to the Jeep, uh, Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Rubicon. And uh, again, still not a, really a family vehicle, more of a kind of an off-road um, uh, exploration vehicle, fun vehicle. So uh, Generation 6 will start this year. Uh, when you open the kit, here's all the pieces. By the way, skill level is based on how many pieces there are. And so this particular uh, model was skill level 5, which is the highest. Uh, one are the little snap-together ones that don't require glue for little kids. And then they kind of go up from there. Um, but 4 and 5 are the the more challenging. 5 is the most challenging. And, and all that means is there's, there's more parts. And I think it's more than 120 parts 
is what that means. And so not a big deal. So when I saw skill level five, I just knew there'd be a lot of detail, which is great. So here's all the parts. Um, the, the frame that all the pieces are on, those are called sprues. So the parts are, they come on their sprues, just like they're made, the, the, the factory makes them that way in some kind of stamp or press uh, molding process. And then the instruction booklet um, is super important. So I always set up the box in the background like that um, with the picture of the vehicle, what it should look like when it's done, and then the instruction booklet um, closest to me. So first thing I do is I take, um, I take the parts outside and I spray paint them with a primer, and that's usually a light gray color. Um, primer is not as thick as um, normal paint colors, and so it just applies a little bit of stickiness to each each part. I remember that these came from a factory and they have a chemical releasing agent still on them, so it's a good idea to wash them all before you do anything. So. I like to run them under the sink with a little bit of dish soap um, and then shake them dry and, and just let them dry for a couple hours. Or You know, you can towel dry them, but they'll always be water. So towel dry um, and then just let them sit for a while, um, you know, a couple hours or even half a day. Make sure they are 100% dry. Um, shoot it with a little bit of uh, primer and, you know, a lot of people don't know how to spray paint correctly and they just glob on the paint. Uh, it's really important just to start far off to one side shh, and go all the way across, all the way across uh, and away from the part. So you're not stopping or starting on the piece. Uh, and the first couple coats are just really light. They don't even cover, like, so if I'm painting white pieces, um, my gray primer won't cover the white until probably the third coat. So I spray it once and then go inside, come back out 10 minutes later, spray it again, go back inside, come back out 10 or 15 minutes later. And then uh, the third and fourth coats usually cover the parts pretty good. Um, and you wanna make sure you uh, flip them over and then do the other side as well. So every part kind of has a, a gray uh, coat. So here are, here's kind of a close up of the sprue that has some black pieces on them. So after I had the gray, um, I did black on the parts that I knew would be black. And then it's a good idea to paint, hand paint parts while they're still on the sprue. That way you're not touching them with your fingers. So, I mean, the sprues are, are, are an automatic you know, way to hold the parts without touching the parts. And so here I'm spray painting, uh, sorry, brush painting, and I didn't do such a great job, it looks like. <laughs> um, but I'm brush painting the shocks yellow. And uh, that's what the booklet recommends. And so that's what I went with. I wanted, I wanted this to be a stock uh, vehicle. Now you can paint anything, any color, obviously, and that's kind of fun sometimes, but I wanted this to be an authentic looking vehicle. Um, I learned a lot about cars and trucks by building models, and people laugh when I say that, but I mean, there's 120 plus pieces, and these are all real pieces of the vehicle, and so I'll find a piece and go, what is this? Well, it tells me the number, so I look that up in the instruction booklet, and it says number 107 is the steering gear box. I'm like, oh, okay. So I've learned what a distributor cap is. I've learned what a fuel pump and a water pump is. When I was young, um, from building models. Uh, they can really teach you a lot. So um, while some parts were drying inside, I went outside with some of the larger parts. Now these definitely should be washed um, first. These are larger pieces, so you wanna make sure that the quality is, is as good as possible. Now if you know how to use an airbrush and have an airbrush, that's what's recommended. Um, I don't, so I always use, um, and by the way, don't brush these don't brush the body with a brush um, if at all possible you know invest i think i spent four dollars on the paint so invest in a can of spray paint um, the color that you want and uh, it will always be 90 percent better if not more than if you were trying to brush it so here i've washed the parts and i've spray painted them with a, a light coat of black and um let them dry and now i'm going to paint it um, the light blue color that the car will be so what we're looking at here is the oil pan this is underneath the um the engine which is in the background there and what i 
want to show in this picture is that parts will glue together better if you're not gluing painted parts to painted parts. So here what I've done is I painted the oil pan a dark blue, but then I took a, um, uh, a nail file, which by the way, one of the best tools you, you can have when you're building a model. Um, just a nail file that uh, women uh, will use to um, file their, um, their fingernails. Um, they're basically sandpaper on a stick and they are perfect for modeling. So you can get them at the dollar store and other places for very cheap. And so I just kind of rub back and forth to get some of the paint off of the oil pan before I glued it onto the engine. So here is a, um, a small vise that I use. Uh, it's been outside, so it looks like it's getting rusty. I need to clean that. Um, but it's a way to uh, hold a part in one place while you um, paint it. You can also pick it up and rotate it, move it around and paint all different angles. So it's super useful. Um, the only mistake I made here, to be honest with you, is it, it called for dark blue for an engine cover c color, so I used dark blue. Uh, um, it's not the color that I should have used. Um, a, I should have looked at the um, box because it had a picture of the engine on the box, which was a, a definite light blue. Um, and B, um, I, I ended up repainting it later, which caused, caused some problems, which I'll talk about. So make sure you're happy with the color before you paint everything. I mean, here's the dark blue. It's just too dark. I mean, that's what they called for. It's not black, but it is a dark blue. So um, I just went with that. And this is kind of a, a close up of, um, we've got the headers. And the only thing I haven't added um, are the, uh, the chrome covers here that go over, over the top of the engine. But, you know, you've got the fan and the fan belt and all the parts of the engine that um, make a car go. And um, you want this to be kind of the highlight of the car. I like to leave the uh, hood off of the cars that I build so you can see the engines, which you'll see here at the end. All right, so here's the frame, and it's a, it's a uh, flat or gloss black. And so something this large, you always want to spray paint. I mean, you can hand paint, and I've done it before if I was out of spray paint black, but um, uh, it's such a big piece, it's nice to be able to take it outside and uh, spray paint it. Um, so here are the exhaust pipes uh, on the sprue. And again, I'm using the sprues as a way to um, hold the pieces, um, not only off the table here, off the board, but also I can paint one side, flip it over and paint the other without having to let it dry first because it's not sitting on anything. So then I cut the exhaust pipes off and glue them in place. I use uh, scotch tape, clear tape, a lot to hold things in place if they're not quite, uh, if they won't stay. Uh, yes, I'm using super glue, um, but sometimes it doesn't stay exactly where I want it. So I hold things in place temporarily with clear tape, and then later I'll remove the clear tape. Um, so here's another view of the uh, engine. I have now uh, installed the engine onto the frame you know what's cool about this to me is i've never built a real car but this is exactly how you would build a real car i mean you you would have the frame you probably have the wheels and the tires on too you know but you wouldn't have to sometimes it's on a on a lift or a rack but you would in, start installing the engine and then the exhaust system etc um as you go um so here's the the shocks that i was painting earlier and i've put the wheels and tires on with shocks um, on that tire. And so here's what's called the rolling chassis. This is the uh, chassis, the frame, with wheels and tires, and everything else is pretty much installed. Uh, here's a picture of me doing the uh, roll bar, roll cage, and it wasn't quite staying where I wanted it, so I used a paint bottle to kind of lean against it. And so again, uh, clear tape is good. Uh, but where I, I wasn't sure where to put clear tape in this situation. Uh, sometimes you can just use things that are around you, um, a glass or a paint um, bottle to get, get it, put a little weight against something while it's drying in place. Okay. Uh, good model building is all about going slow. I know it's hard because you want to rush through it. Biggest mistakes people make is they don't wait between steps. And so... 
um, the glue and the paint mixed together. They make a sticky mess. You get fingerprints on the side of the car um, because you haven't washed your hands and things are still wet. Um, that's fairly common with new, new builders. Um, but if you just have some patience and let things dry, go work on something else while another, one part is drying uh, and it all works out pretty well. And I'm someone that doesn't have a lot of patience, so uh, it's a challenge, but um, the quality is so much better if you just um, take your time. And honestly, I built this between teaching online classes. And so if I'd have five or 10 minutes between classes, I'd go do a, a, a part or a piece or a step, and then I'd have to come back and teach for, for a little bit. And so I was forced to, to, to wait uh, and that really did help me because the paint was dry by the time I got back to got back to it. So, so here I've uh, put the um, the doors on um, the uh, it's not the body, it's not the frame. I guess it'd be the what the interior, the interior, and then the seats. Now the seats came white, um, but I still spray painted them um, white. In the meantime, I ran outside and the body, I put it on a two by four so I could kind of um, get to it better. Um, and also I could walk around and spray paint it from all kinds of different angles. Remember to start light so it doesn't cover it. It, it just gives it something to stick to. It gives the next coat something to stick to, but let it dry, let it settle. Because if you don't, you're spray painting wet paint into wet paint. And that's different than spraying wet paint on top of a smooth, dry layer of paint. It makes a big difference. So I probably did five coats, maybe six coats. Yeah, maybe five coats uh, total of the blue paint. You don't want to get, go too heavy. Um, you don't want any drips. Um, that's, that's, that's a key. So just light coat after light coat. So now I have brought the body inside. I decided not to paint the, the, the engine compartment black like it recommended. I just left it blue. And then I just used a brush and painted the battery and a few of the parts in the engine compartment black. I was okay with that. It's kind of like a custom. So yeah, I decided not to go 100% stock. Um, and that's okay. I, d I don't mind. That's something I was willing to, to change. Um, so I've also put the dashboard in. So right here, there's the dashboard. And uh, this is the steering column. I just need to glue the steering wheel on. These are the blinkers uh, and the windshield wiper uh, uh, switches right there. Okay, so um, I did notice that when I put the body on the frame, it was crooked. So when I put the bumper on, it's lower on the right. And I couldn't really fix that. I didn't want to break anything. It's really tricky to tweak plastic parts after they've already dried. I decided to go ahead and make this kind of a unique um, part of this vehicle. You know, it, this is from 1966 or so. So maybe it got bent or dented or something in its history. So it's not off, you know, whatever. I just decided to leave it. It's fine. So I have glued the headlights into the grill and the, um, um, the other white lights. Not sure if those are parking lights, I guess and glued the grill into the body. So um, I do use a different kind of glue, um, which I'll get to in a minute for clear parts. And that's important. So here um, it's starting to look like a car. I've got uh, gluing some pieces on top of the engine here and I've got a piece of tape. Um, I didn't like, there was a gap right here. Turns out that gap was for the window. Didn't know that. Uh, and so I glued it shut. And it didn't, you can see there's still kind of a crack here. Um, it actually turned out okay, but because I did not end up using the window anyway, uh, I decided to go with the convertible look and leave the top off and the windows uh, out of it. But I did put some glue in that crack and squeeze it closed and put some tape here to force it to dry that way. It turned out okay. Um, so the windshield with windshield wipers, there's a rear view mirror. Uh, there is a side mirror. Unfortunately, the mirror broke off. Uh, it's, I don't know why this came as two different pieces. I, I knew that was going to be a problem. This was one piece and then this little flat chrome piece you had to glue on to that little tip right there. And as I was moving it, um, it broke off and I never found it. 
So there's, you know, every time you build a model, this is one of the reasons I love building models, you make mistakes. Every time, no matter how good you get, and then you, you tell yourself, well, next time I build it, I'm going to do better. That's part of the fun. Um, and every one of my models, I probably have 20 or 30 that I've kept. Um, they all have something wrong with them <laughs> somewhere. Um, and you probably wouldn't notice unless you knew. But, you know, like my crooked bumper and, you know, there's just things. I know about it um, because I built it. But perfectly fine. But it is starting to look um, look better. Um, the Oh, by the way, the I thought I had a picture of it. But they do make clear plastic glue. Um, you know, if you build models, you know how many times have you gotten fingerprints or a little drop of uh, super glue on your windshield and it never comes off. It it ruins it. It's bad. Um, it's one of the probably the most common mistakes people make is they get super glue on the window while they're or any of the other windows uh, windshield when they're trying to glue it in. Um, so they do make a, uh, it's almost like Elmer's glue, which by the way, you can use, I've used that before, but this is a little bit stronger and, and it dries clear. So it's perfect for, uh, glass, plastic glass pieces. So, all right. So here's kind of my finished vehicle. I've got some decals. And so what I did is I soaked these decals in water. They slide off, you know, be real careful. Uh, the trick here is put water on the body in the area that you're going to be putting it on so you can slide it around. Okay, so you take it, you soak it in a pan of water or a dish of water. Eventually they separate. Uh, and then you take the decal carefully and you put it on the car in water so it's wet. And that gives you a chance to move it around. You probably have 30 seconds or so to move it around before it starts to dry. Um, it's really delicate stuff. I ripped, um, ripped this one in half. I think it's right here above the back tire. You can't see it because I spent some time lining them back up. Um, and so once you do that, you take some, um, I like toilet paper. You can do tissue paper, but toilet paper is a little softer. And I just kind of um, dot the water off and then smooth it away so there's no bubbles in the decals. So it's not perfect. I've got a mistake right here by the left blinker. I don't know what this little bump is. I just left it, um, but I was just happy to have it straight. I also had to cut it away from this door hinge because it went right over that door hinge. And so I just used my hobby knife and I cut that part away. So it turned out pretty good. Um, I like the um, the Bronco decal also right here. I hand painted the uh, orange and the red uh, side lamps. There's two gas tanks in this, which is kind of cool. So it's got like a backup tank. Um, and you know, it turned out pretty good. So I, it was raining outside, so I couldn't take this outside for photos, um, uh, with a realistic background. So I just put it in my Lego city and took some pictures of it there. So there it is. I hope that, uh, gets you motivated and excited to go pick out a model and build one yourself. Uh, if so, share it with me, send me some pictures. I'd love to see it. Um, such a great hobby and you end up with something you're you know you're proud that you built yourself and you come all the way from just a bunch of pieces to a finished product that looks like a vehicle um, that you're happy with so um, that's it for now mr johns is out